Hi everyone, today in this presentation we're going to be talking about the active voice and the passive voice. Um, I know that we've been seeing this come up a lot in our AP practice multiple choice questions and then sometimes we also see the passive voice notes on Turnitin, so I thought it would be helpful just to do a quick recap, hopefully. If not a recap, then maybe we're seeing it for the first time, but either way, just doing a quick run through about the active and passive voice, what they mean, what to do with them. So in this brief lesson, we're going to be talking about how to identify if something is in the active voice or the passive voice, how to arrange sentences in each voice, and then understanding why you would use each one, and then how to vary sentences to highlight certain information by using either the active voice or the passive voice. So just to start off when we're identifying them, a couple key things to keep in mind. We want to remember what these words themselves mean. So thinking of active voice, when we think of something active, we think of moving around, we think of being more forceful. When we talk about passive, we usually think of just kind of sitting back, letting things happen. Um, if you're passive aggressive, we say that phrase to mean that like you're not really being direct, you're not being straightforward, you're just letting things unfold a certain way. So to tell if something is in the active voice or the passive voice, we're going to keep a few things in mind. When something's in the active voice, that means that the subject is doing the action in the sentence. It's very clear. So for example, if I say, I wrote the paper, that would be active voice, because it's very clear who is doing the action of writing. In this case, it's me. Um, so that would be an example of active voice. On the other hand, with the passive voice, it's when the subject has something done to it. Um, so it's not the main person acting in the sentence, it's something being done. So that subject is passive, the verb is being done to it. So for example, same sentence, more or less, same idea, could be changed to passive voice by saying the paper was written by me. So in this case, it's not as active. I'm not saying I did this. I'm saying the paper was written by me. So when we have that extra word was, a lot of times that's a clue that something is in the passive voice. The key thing with the passive voice is that it can often be missing the acting subject. So although this sentence says the paper was written by me and it's still clear who wrote it, it would also be completely grammatically correct to just say the paper was written. Um, the big difference there is that this is passive voice, grammatically correct, but we're missing some key information. It's kind of vague. It's unclear who did it. So to arrange sentences in active and passive voice, we more often want to change something from the passive voice to the active voice. So we're going to work on an example like that. It's really rare that people want to take something in the active voice and change it to the passive voice. We'll talk about why later. But for now, just seeing how we can change things around. There's a few steps, so we're going to start off with an example sentence that will probably surprise none of you. Our example sentence is going to be, the other team was crushed by the Bruins. So this is an example of passive voice. Remember we said here it's something being done to another team rather than the Bruins taking the action. And it's another key thing, not always when we have was, that doesn't always mean it's a passive voice sentence, but a lot of times it does. Okay, so here we have that other clue there. So the first thing that we are going to do to change this sentence from the passive voice to the active voice is we're going to identify what subject is doing the action. It gets a little messy sometimes with sentences in the passive voice, but here we can tell that the subject doing the action is the Bruins. So we've bolded that, we've kept that in mind. The next thing we're going to do is put that subject at the beginning of the sentence and then move the verb immediately after. So we're going to switch things around a little bit in the sentence. It's going to be a little bit jumbled to start. But we're going to move that subject to the beginning, so our sentence will now start with the Bruins, and we're going to take our verb crushed and put that right after. Then we're going to delete the unnecessary words, right? We have a couple random ones jumbled at the end. So then we're going to be left in the end with our main example, the Bruins crushed the other team. So now we've taken this sentence in passive voice, rearranged things, got rid of a few things, and changed it to the active voice. So a few things to keep in mind about why we might use the active voice or the passive voice. With the active voice, it's more clear who did what and it, the person acting is the most important part of the sentence. Active voice is generally preferred. It's a little bit less wordy. If you look at the example sentence that we just went over in the past slide, you saw how when we changed it from passive voice to active voice, we got rid of a few extra words, but we still kept the same meaning. So a lot of times when we write things in the passive voice, it's just 
wordier and not in a way that necessarily adds anything to the sentence. Passive voice is not always bad, um, but a lot of times we see passive voice when we are trying to avoid responsibility, right? So a lot of times uh, we hear the phrase, oh, mistakes were made. Great example of passive voice, it's kind of admitting that a mistake was made, but still not strong enough in admitting who did it. Passive voice can also be used when the thing being done is most important. So rather than the person acting being most important, the action or the thing that action is done to is most important here. So sometimes we want to vary things up. We want to switch between active and passive voice. Keep in mind, though, that almost always active voice is preferred because it is more concise and more clear. But sometimes you want to switch it up just to make sure that what's at the beginning of the sentence is the most important because that's what people are going to pay the most attention to. So really quickly, we're going to talk about kind of the different effect that we have on sentences when we rearrange pieces of it. So for example, if we have the sentence Shakespeare wrote Macbeth in 1606, it's a clear example of the active voice because we have our main acting subject coming first. And this is where we have an emphasis on the author. So we talked about the active voice emphasizes who did the action. Same example here, Shakespeare is the person who did the action. Emphasis is on him in this sentence. If we take that sentence and switch it around a little bit, another variation could be Macbeth was written by Shakespeare in 1606. We should be able to recognize by now that that is passive voice because we have the word was added into our main verb. Here we have an emphasis on the product. So if the most important part of your sentence is Macbeth rather than Shakespeare, this would be an acceptable way to switch it up. And then sometimes you want other information to come first. So we have two possible variations for this third example. You could say either in 1606 Shakespeare wrote Macbeth or in 1606 Macbeth was written. We have here one example in active voice, one in passive voice, but either way the modifier is coming first. So in this example, the thing that would be most important would be the time when it was written. So you can see here that switching things up not only changes it from active to passive voice, but really changes what the emphasis is on in the sentence. So although active voice is generally preferred, feel free to rearrange if needed if you're trying to truly emphasize another piece of the sentence instead. So that's it for active and passive voice. Start thinking of any questions so we can start going over them together in class.